Hello. Um, today I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, one of the biggest movies that has uh, come out within this century. Uh, uh, and uh, a sequel has come out, obviously, but um, I have not seen that yet. I probably will in the theater because, you know, these kind of films, I think, are best seen in the big screen. And... Um, that film is Avatar. Um, this is the uh, three-disc Blu-ray version with uh, with three cuts of the film, the theatrical cut, um, which I want to just reiterate if it tells the, how long it is. Well, of course not. Um, but it's not... Uh, overtly long uh, the, the re-release that happened had eight minutes of special or more footage and then overall 16 minutes of additional footage of uh, that is like exclusive to this set and uh, that version is only two minutes shy of three hours so yeah man I, math and me aren't always the um, yeah, anyway, that's the overall time difference and some things that are added and make some stuff interesting. And recently, I rewatched the uh, uh, nearly uh, three hour version, the extended vert cut, um, as it's advertised here. And um, this is an excellent set, and it has. Two extra discs of uh, special features, including like a, the making of the film, which I find to be really interesting. You know, um, I know a lot of people have things to say about this film, and you know, not always the most positive. Um, you know, it's been compared to like Dances with Wolves and Fern Gully with its plot and and other films of the sort. That might be about, you know, somebody going into a, a group or a tribe or whatever and sort of helping them to overcome, you know, whatever obstacle is uh, going to come and uh, they're going to come face to face with. Um, and then they sort of become part of that main character seems to be part of that main group, uh, that group or tribe or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, films of that sort and stuff with nature and all, all that, you know, good stuff. Um, of course, this is now like a science fiction sort of environment on a planet. And, um, you know, the main character, Jake Sully, um, you know, he may not be the seen as the greatest protagonist of all time, or maybe even the most original. But overall, he's fine. Um, uh, it's interesting how people go back and forth over, you know, who the good guys are. Are the good guys the Navi, the people, the native people of Pandora, as well as the scientists and such, trying to help them? Or are the, the people in the military and the company that's, you know, sent out to try to make some sort of deal with um, the Navi in order to, you know, you know, get some unobtainium that uh, is very valuable and um, can help with uh, certain things back home on Earth, which, uh, like, you know, there's like, in this world of Avatar, it's overpopulation, and so, yeah, as a result, you know, things aren't necessarily the best, um, and Jake Sully is a former, uh, you know, he was former Marine, so, um, is in a wheelchair, got injured, and, you know, and can get, if he can fix a spinal, he said, if you can afford it, and he, you know, isn't really able to afford such a, uh, uh, uh procedure, um, and, uh, yeah, it's very, it's a, overall, the film itself, I think, is 
fine. Uh, I know there are people who hate it. There are people who just think it's overrated. And I do think there are, it might be some merits to the overrated part. Um, but uh, I, I want to sort of go back to when this film came out in 2009. And I saw it in 2010. Um, it came out in December 2009. And I saw it, you know, January 2010. Um, and I, uh, at finals, um, I saw this after, like, my last day of finals, and, um, I was a little tired for, like, the first 15 or so minutes, uh, but afterwards I was very engaged with what was going on, and it's a, a visually stunning movie, it's an incredible film, and then watching the behind-the-scenes making of it, uh, I have to say that kind of helps me sort of appreciate what what took to make this film even more. Of course, by the time this film, you know, finally got made and came out, you know, we had a lot of excellent science fiction and fantasy films, you know, that came out. You know, we had the Star Wars prequels, which did uh, test the boundaries and pushed the boundaries, not necessarily test, but, you know, pushed more of for like you know, special effects, and while, you know, at the time, there were some mixed reactions from various people, uh, over time, people have, you know, uh, uh, you know, learned to sort of enjoy them more for what they are, you know, and not to what people expected those films to be. Also, there was the Lord of the Rings trilogy, which, you know, was excellent, you know, uh, those films were fantastic. Um, also the Harry Potter films of the time, you know, after this film, uh, there were, uh, like three, two more, the two or three more. Um, I know in 2010 and 11 was the seventh final one, or seven, eight. Um, yeah, I think in 2009, the sixth one came out. Uh, I could, it could be, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I, be I believe so. The 2009 was the, 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 it was the sixth film, and then, you know, they made the uh, seventh one, which then became two, into, you know, a, you know, a, instead of being like a three and a half or so hour excellent, like, kind of like f final film, they split it into two films but you know even by that point you know the special effects and things of the world in Harry Potter are truly excellent also <clears throat> and also other films too not even just primarily science fiction or fantasy you know, of course this is science fiction but um or I guess space opera to be more precise because you know it is character driven you know Jake Sully is the lead character and um you know Sam Worthington he does a very good job um, as does really everybody, um, the cast, um, Zoe Saldana as, uh, the Terry is very good, you know, the motion capture performance from her, you know, as well as, uh, uh, Sam Worthington, but, you know, Sam Worthington gets to be both the human part as well as the, you know, being in the CGI suit, <clears throat> Um, and it, it's really interesting how in this film that that happens. Um, and seeing in the theater was a, an amazing experience. I really loved it. And I hope to see the second film soon just because, you know, while this film is f a very fine film in and of itself, um, at the same time when you get it at home and you watch it, it doesn't hit you as incredible as it did if you saw it in the theater. Um, in the theater, it's an amazing film to watch. Um, in at home, it's still cool, you know. You know, for what it is, it's fine. It's a fine film. Uh, it's one of those things where it's like if you were to rate it, I don't know. I guess, you know, I'm not. Uh, most for rating films, you know. I have a letterbox, and I do have an IMDb account, and I do rate some films, and some films I think are, you know, accurately what I generally feel. If something is like a 5 out of 5, I get such. And if something is a little rating, I do give it 
as a low rating as I feel it deserves. Uh, like, you know, of course, it's my opinion. Um, but even then, it's like you you just are really, it's kind of hard. And for this film, I think for the theatrical uh, experience, five out of five, because that is an excellent, this is a kind of film you, you know, there's a lot of debate over whether theaters are dead or not. And I don't think they are. Um, and of course, there's always going to be films like this that will come out. And I think, you know, all kinds of films should be out in theaters, independent ones also. Um, but of course, you know, with the way streaming is, you know, for some indie films, if say you're unable to get like theatrical distribution, but maybe you're able to get your film, you know, uh, shown through like some streaming service. If I've heard like Amazon uh, allows some people to be able to put their movies out in them. Um, on Amazon Prime. So, in that way, you can get your film seen. Um, but, you know, there's a theatrical experience that is, like, just like no other. Um, and I've always been fond of the theatrical experience. And, you know, anytime there's a new movie that looks really good, I want to try and see it. You know, I saw The Whale not long ago, and that was a... That was a very good experience. You know, I'm sure, you know, it's one of those movies where I kind of thought if I didn't get to see it in the theater, all right. But I kind of wanted to also, if that makes sense. Uh, the sequel to Avatar, I really want to see in the theater. Um, though whenever I do get to see that, I probably won't talk about it much until I get to see it until it's on, like, on Blu-ray, because... Or something like the sort, because then I want to see if there's any extended cut there. If maybe if I thought, you know, the ex theatrical experience of that film is excellent, but who knows? Maybe the if they have a similar extended cut of the sort of like this film had, um, I think that would be kind of cool to see and be able to uh, note the differences and what does it add to the film, if anything. And I do think some of the stuff that uh, is uh, added into the re-release as well as the theatrical cut uh, are quite good. They're pretty good. I, I think they're really done uh, quite well. I uh, definitely think it's worth... Uh, it was worth seeing in the big screen. Um, and if you didn't see it in the big screen and were able to see it last year, I hope you enjoyed it because uh, I didn't see it in the big screen again. But that's because, you know, there's other things going on at the time when it came out. And also, I had seen it already in the big screen and I remember it very well. It's It was an experience like no other. You know, it was like, you know, I think the prequels, the Star Wars prequels were some of the best theatrical uh experiences I've ever had in my life and I would also put like the Dark Knight trilogy up there and seeing Jaws a uh, couple times for re-releases uh, one in particular for the 40th anniversary which was great you know for so films like that and, and also Reservoir Dogs which I love and Lawrence of Arabia it's kind of funny I, I, I've got to see my like top like films like sort of in my top five like I have a kind of bracket them all uh, on the big screen I haven't seen the original trilogy of Star Wars because they haven't really re-released those uh, that I've been able to see them really to my knowledge could have but I don't know maybe where I live they just weren't it's just one of those things where you know state I live in it's not uh, cool enough or something to where I can see a re-release of all of those movies um i know in some places you know that happens but you know yeah you know either way i mean it's just like you know a theatrical experience is excellent and this is one of the best theatrical experiences i've had um and i know i haven't really talked about the overall plot but considering you know people compare it to like dances with wolves and fern gully with plot that's kind of why you know in a way that those are very valid, but again, you know, 
there's other movies of the sort that have sort of similar, not the same, but similar kind of, you know, uh, plot points of sorts, you know, similar kind of characters, similar kind of plot, you know, you know, and I'm, you might be able to find some uh, stuff like that before Dances with Wolves that had a similar plot and characters, but maybe they weren't well done as well, you know, as well done as that in that film. Whereas, you know, with uh, Dances with Wolves, it was done very excellent. You know, uh, it was done really well, uh, excellent film. Um, and it did win Best Picture and Director. And, you know, of course, there's people who, you know, disagree with that these days. And not so much at the time, but as time went on, people were like, you know, Goodfellas is a better film. And I do agree with that. Um, but, you know... Dances with Wolves is a fine film. I'm not upset with that uh, film winning um, in the sense that it could have, uh, I guess another film that wouldn't have been maybe seen as good could have won, be it another film that could have been nominated in its place. And then people are like, well, that movie wasn't that great. Um, James Cameron lost Best Director in Picture to... Um, Catherine Bigelow, his ex-wife, uh, for The Hurt Locker, and that's an excellent film. Um, and, um, you know, he's like, he has no problem with losing to her, um, which which is nice to hear. Um, though I've heard some people like, you know, yeah, oh, blah, blah. he's just he's seeing that because, you know, he lost and doesn't want to seem like a, uh, like a real spoil sport or anything. Like, I should have won, but, you know, also, it's like, you know, science fiction films haven't really won anything uh, major, like at the Academy Awards in terms of best picture and director, you know, stuff like Star Wars or other things like, you know, science fiction or science fiction elements really implemented in them that have been acknowledged, you know, it didn't win. And, you know, you all know how I feel about the original Star Wars and how it's my favorite film. I do think it, that film should have won uh, picture and director, and even screenplay perhaps, but uh, picture and director for sure. Um, I'm not all that upset that, you know, Avatar lost best picture and director, though. Uh, I think The Hurt Locker was very deserving of it, and I have no real issues with it winning. Uh, best Picture and Director, because uh, that's an extraordinary film. Um, Avatar is an excellent film, uh, and it's in the sense of how groundbreaking the special effects and visuals are. Uh, it's a truly am amazing spectacle to see. If you're able to see it in the big screen, I think that makes that spectacle all the more uh, incredible. Um, seeing it at home, the the, immers uh, the immersiveness isn't as impactful, though. Um, again, having watched it again after some time, it's a fine film. It's all right. It is not horrible, as some people say. Is it as great as others say? Eh, I don't know about that. <laughs> um, it's fine. You know, comparing to what I think, I think this might be like a three, three and a half out of five kind of movie with the, you know, because of the performances are good, uh, uh, the visuals are excellent, and it's an overall well-made film. You know, it's just like, you know, but the spectacle and everything isn't as impactful once you see it at home. It's not that uh, phenomenal of an experience in my opinion, and I've seen this various times over the years since the theatrical uh, release. Um, again, it's not a horrible movie. It's not a bad film. But it isn't as excellent as, uh, say, what you saw on the big screen if you did. Um, I did. And, um, yeah. It's a fine movie for what it is. Um, I do wish that the sequel came out 
sooner than it did. I know that he kind of stopped because new technology was being made, and so he wanted to utilize that. But considering he has like uh, two, three more sequels or so that he's planned out that he'd like to make, I don't know, I would have thought just utilize the new technology for those films so that each movie is just as technologically uh, uh, amazing you know to look at than the last you know, no doubt overall the second film is excellent overall and even if it did come out like three to four years after this film I'm sure the experience would have been excellent all the same but you know, James Cameron's doing what James Cameron's doing. Um, and it seems to be working for him. So, hey, you know, who who am I to uh, question what he's doing? You know, he seems to be doing uh, fine on his own, um, regardless if people love it or not. Um, but, yeah, uh, this is a fine film. I do believe that the... Uh, making of all the uh, documentaries and featurettes that are available on this set is excellent to watch um, and whether or not it will make your experience in uh, thinking back to the film uh, even better or not that's up to you and your own mind but for me I do enjoy seeing how films are made and you know and seeing this film being made is really well done and it's excellent. I do think that the making of it is truly excellent. Um, maybe that's better than the overall film itself. Um, but, you know, either way, I do find uh, the making of it just as interesting as, say, watching the film itself. And so there is all that. Uh, there's really not a whole lot else I could really say um, fine film and uh, if you have this set or anything with like the making of uh, stuff on in addition to it I would say give that a watch just to see what it's all what what all took to make it I think if anything you might find it truly interesting um, uh, Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver is in this also she was very good uh, Giovanni Rabisi and uh Stephen Lang are also in this. Um, uh, quite a bit of talented people uh, are a part of this, so, you know, uh, that's also a plus, I think, you know. Um, uh, the experience of seeing this in the theater was fantastic, and, uh, yeah, fine experience at home. Not as amazing as in the theater, but for what it is, it's fine. It's a definitely a fine film, not a horrible film at all. Um, is it overrated? Per, um, perhaps, again. Uh, you know, it might be that people are recalling their, their theatrical experience, so when they watch it at home, that could possibly override any kind of experience they might have, no matter how great a home movie theater system you have uh, in your home. You know, no matter how great that might be, it still doesn't exactly replicate the, you know, the theatrical experience, you know. Uh, but that's me. And so, in a, in a way, like, what do I know? Uh, but, yeah, that's just all I have to say about Avatar. Not a bad film. The experience in the big screen was amazing. And, um, yeah, that's really all I have to say. Hope all of you are doing well. You've all had a uh, great, uh, great day, great week, great weekend, and all that good stuff. And I'll see you all next time.